Welcome to lesson 10 of the Swift UI to-do list app series. In the last part, we were successfully saving new entries, new items to our database. And in this part, we're gonna finally fetch them and query them out in a real time way such that when we make new entries, we also see them. So hit that like button before we dive in and let's do it, let's dig right in. So what we wanna work on in this particular video is our to-do list view. And we want to actually get our elements, our to-do list items to start showing up, kind of important. So I want to call your attention to our initializer here. We're passing in the user ID. And I briefly mentioned that we're going to need this, but I didn't quite clarify why we need it. Well, the reason we need it is because Firestore, our database, has a handy uh, property wrapper, some functionality where we can actually say, hey, observe all the entries in the database at a particular path. And when I say path here, what I mean is our data that we care about lives at users, the user ID, to do's, and then basically all of our entries, right? So n number of to do list items. Well, this user ID actually fits in right here. Right, it's the user ID specific for whom we want to get items. This is why we actually need this here. So what we'll do up here is we actually first want to import Firestore, Firebase Firestore Swift, and we're gonna create um, something up here called a Firestore query. We'll say this is var items, and it's going to be a list of to-do list item. And this is the model that we basically used uh, to create a new item before we converted it to a dictionary and stuck it in our database. So we're essentially saying that we're gonna have a query that'll continuously listen for items. Now this is now yelling at me with an error because it's saying, well, hey, you have not assigned items yet. We can't actually assign it up here with a hard-coded value because this is gonna differ based on whatever user is signed in. Uh, and this is where this user ID comes into play. So what we can do here is say self that underscore items. The reason we're using underscore is this is a convention for property wrappers and this at thing is a property wrapper up here. And we can actually say that this equals a fire store query. And we care to create a query with a collection path. And it's going to be this collection path right above that I've commented out. So it's going to be users. Then we're going to stick in the user ID slash to do's. And we can actually get rid of this user ID here like so. So this is our items. If you hit command B, it should hopefully be building. The other thing that I will do is down in our preview content, we stuck in just an empty string, which is not good, no bueno, because um, it's not gonna actually render anything because that ID isn't real. So what I will do is from our actual database, I'm gonna copy our unique user ID that we actually have created and inserted into the database. That way, when I do command shift P, we should hopefully get a preview rendering here. So now that we've got this items presumably working, we should be able to loop over these items and show a uh, element for each entry. So let's create a list over items and we're gonna have item in. And let's just start by doing a text and we'll say item.title. I will also say list style will be a plain list style. And just like that, it's actually quite fast. You already see, we see buy some more eggs get populated. So that's pretty darn cool already. Now we are gonna want this row to look a little bit nicer. We're gonna want maybe the due date below it. We want maybe um, a little check mark on the right of it. And this is why we actually already created uh, another view, which is a to-do list item view. This represents a single item. And this is where we will encapsulate all that logic. Now this gets created with a to-do list item, just like that. And we will probably want a respective view model for this as well momentarily, but let's just handle setting this up. So we're gonna have a horizontal stack inside of here, and we wanna make sure we spell that right. And we're gonna then have a vertical stack. Now our vertical stack will have 
two text labels, the first one showing the item's title, the next one showing the item's due date, but rather than showing the due date directly, what I want to do is create a date element, time interval since 1970, and once we have created this here, we want to actually also format this. So I will say dot formatted, and we want to format this with a appropriate date and time. So the date here, perhaps we will uh, format this with abbreviated, and for the time, we will make this shortened. So this will actually take your date object and make it look a whole lot nicer. Um, let's see what else we want to do. We'll want to have a spacer. And let's just hit Command Shift P to see this in action, just so we have uh, something here. It wants a dummy item, so let me create one here just to work with. We'll say ID is one, two, three. Title is get milk. Maybe we'll have a due date is uh, the current date time interval since 1970. And created will basically be the same thing. And is done will be perhaps false. So let's hit Command P to see our preview here one more time. And let's see why this is yelling at me. We need to have some parentheses for our spacer. And let's preview what this is looking like. So cool, we've got this vertical stack here. It looks like it is um, centering both of these text labels. So I am going to say alignment here is leading. And hopefully that looks a little better. Okay, looking a little better. We probably also want our uh, font size to be a little bigger for the actual item. I'll also bold the actual item. And for this one here, I will say the font here will be a, a footnote. And in this case, the font here will be, let's try title and see how obnoxiously large that is and if it works. All right, it's not actually too bad. We probably also want this to have a foreground color that's a little lighter, so maybe like a gray color is sufficient, but let's see if that looks too dull, it's slightly dull. So what I'll actually go with here is we can use a um, UI color, and what I'm gonna look for is a secondary label. This is basically like a lighter label color, and we can actually probably get rid of the bold color here. All right, cool. So the reason we put this inside of a horizontal stack is on the right hand side of this is we want a button and this button should basically be um, tappable to mark this element as done or not done. In the label, the actual case of what we're gonna show here, it's going to be a uh, image with a system name and the system name is going to essentially be if the item is done, we are going to show a filled in circle. Otherwise, we are just going to show a normal circle. So here we're gonna have a, a circle dot, I believe it's check mark dot fill. Let's see if I remembered that correctly. All right, we'll do command shift P and let's set our is done in our preview to be true and make sure something shows up. It looks like nothing does. So it might have been check mark dot circle dot fill okay it looks like that's correct and just as a reference you don't need to be guessing these if you hit this little plus at the top right of xcode and then you actually hit this little icon you can actually search for all of apple's iconography in here there's also a dedicated sf symbols app to search for various icons but i just happen to remember hence why i'm guessing so awesome so we've got that check mark there um, the view is kind of smushed to the edge of the screen. I don't think that's a problem though because when we end up using it in our list that will actually, I guess, just do now, it should look better. So let's create this with an item, which is an item. And because we're in a list, things are looking better. Now our font looks really wonky, so let me get rid uh, of this and let me actually make it, maybe we'll make it like body and see if that looks a little better because that title was a little large. Otherwise, perhaps we'll specify our own uh, titles here. So um, I should be able to click on this button here and something should happen. Right now, nothing is happening, um, but at least this view shows up. I should be able to also swipe on these rows. So to do that, we're gonna add a swipe action modifier 
and swipe action will basically just have a button in here and the button will be delete and let's see if we can actually swipe on this i believe that's how we can get this to work yep um we probably want it to be red since it would look a tad bit nicer so let's actually uh, use a different permutation of this button we want the one with an action which will be to delete and the label here we will go with delete with a foreground color of red so it looks a little more uh, panicky since you are deleting something we want to make sure that's your intention alrighty hit command B Make sure everything's looking good. Alrighty, let's try that one more time. It looks like it's still not red. Let's run it in a simulator. Let me see what it looks like over here. All right, so it's definitely not red. Let's see why that's happening. Let's try background color here. Perhaps that's what I'm looking for. And it's still not red. Hmm. Okay, let's see what's going on. So we're gonna we're gonna debug this together. So let's actually change this back to what I had here as a standard button and let's make this color dot red and I could have swore this should turn red that way but perhaps not so we might have to come back to this uh, and indeed debug it but I could have swore this is how we have gotten this to be red before but anyways we've got our to-do list items rendering here um, when I click on them nothing happens when I hit delete nothing happens we eventually well, I guess we can stick it in right now. Uh, we're gonna want to implement this function, which is delete uh, an item. So we're gonna say func delete item, and this should be to-do list item, just like that. Or maybe we'll just pass in the to-do list item ID. And whenever this button is tapped, we can say view model delete item dot ID, like that, and Similarly, we've got that button with the check mark here as well. So what we'll want to actually do is whenever we tap on um, this check mark button, we'll want to say view model dot uh, update check or set uh, or toggle check mark, something along the lines, right? So basically flip the check mark. If it's checked, uncheck it. If it's unchecked, check it. So we'll say toggle uh, is done is I guess a better function name here. I don't believe we have a view model for this yet. Let me see if we do. I think actually we do. I remember creating it and having different names for it. So we do have this guy here. Let's stick this function on here. And let's go back to our uh, view here. So this is in our single item. So we want to do list item view. And we wanna create an instance of this state object or of this view model, I should say, as a state object. So now that we've got an instance here of our view model, we should be able to say toggle is done, item is item, we'll wanna pass this in. Um, I don't wanna implement this in this video, but I at least want to stub out these functions. That way we have a nice uh, jumping off point as we continue. So this is where we will mark this and um, if this item changes, of course, we should indeed see our UI update as well. So I guess it's a good stopping point for this video. We now actually have our elements showing up uh, in this to-do list and the gut check to make sure it works properly is let's add a new item. So we're gonna say finish up video. We're gonna stick with today since that's probably what we're doing today and I'll hit done and boom we see finish up video did indeed get created for April 30th at 6.34 p.m., uh, which is indeed my local time here on the East Coast of the U.S. So awesome, kudos to you if you've gotten this far. The app is more or less functional now. Uh, hope to see you in the next lessons. Hit that like button before jumping on over there. I will see you guys there.